Hey everyone, EJ from iDesign.com here and today I'm going to be showing you how to create 2D style ribbons in Cinema 4D. Now, you'll know if you work with After Effects much, it's very hard to create these 2D style ribbons with 3D depth to it. You know, the type of ribbons you'll see in a lot of infographics, web design, motion graphics stuff, right? Uh, and if you're like me, I just try to stay away from making any 3D kind of stuff in After Effects just because of uh, there's no true 3D workspace in After Effects. And if I can do it in Cinema 4D, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So uh, that's what I'm going to show you how to do is 2D ribbons in Cinema 4D uh, that have a little illustrative style effect. So right now I have this nice little shield element with my Wacom pens because... As they say, the Wacom pen is mightier than the sword, right? So I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to turn off the interactive render region here. You can see my ribbon spline that I made. And I'm going to skip the how to make a spline thing because I hope we all know how to make a spline at this point. So i uh, got this nice spline here. You can see how I made it in my front and top view here. Uh, and you can make any style ribbon you want. Uh, but I like this nice, wispy, uh, curvy one. So the first thing we need to do is actually get geometry on this uh, ribbon spline here. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is get some geometry. So I'm going to create a plane, and I'm going to make this orientation to positive Z, so it's standing upright, and I'm just going to move it up here in front of our little shield element. And I'm going to keep the width at 400 but the height I'm gonna bring down all the way to like 40 so let's go ahead and we need to wrap this along the spline so we're gonna use the aptly named spline wrap deformer and we'll just make this a child of our plane object so we can actually activate that or apply that deformer to the plane and I'm going to define the ribbon spline as the spline we're going to use to deform our geometry. And you can see that, boom, there we go. We have our spline wrap deforming our plane, but it's really chunky right now. And the reason because the reason for that is because our width segments are very low. So if we bring this up, you can see that this is smoothing out our rib. And I'm going to go ahead and just jack it up to 200 just to be safe. And for height segments, I'm going to bring this down. We don't need 20 height segments, so I'm going to bring this down to, say, 2. Whoop. Let's hit F2 accidentally. Let's go back into our main view here and just hit 2. There we go. And the reason for this will be apparent later, and I'll get to that later, why I don't just choose 1. But I'm going to leave that at 2. So, okay. <clears throat> got everything good I'm gonna go ahead and apply a ribbon texture and I'm using a cell shader uh, and you can find out more about the cell shader in my recent tutorial on how to use the shell cell shader uh, and I'm gonna apply that to the plane here I'm gonna render that and you can see we have this nice 2d illustrative depth uh, to our ribbon but you'll see that the, the shading is flip backwards and the reason for that is because our UVs are a little bit uh, flipped and that's because of our orientation so if we go to our plane and just switch it to negative Z and hit render there we go now we got the shadow on the right side everything's looking good uh, the one thing uh, I mean you might like how this looks right now where you have your uh, this angle this angled curves to your ribbon but I want the angle of my curves to be straight up and down so it looks a little bit more 2D-ish, right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do is my ribbon spline, I'm going to create an instance of that, okay? And so that's just going to make a copy of my ribbon. If I move this up, you can see that there's my second copy. And I just undo that so it's right where it uh, originally uh, got its instance from uh, original position and I'm gonna go ahead to my spline wrap and you're gonna see this rail option now what a rail spline does is help uh, help drive where your ribbon or your object is gonna wrap along so think of like train tracks where if you have one train track you can kinda go all crazy on the other one but if you have two 
splines guiding everything you can get really precise uh, control of where you want your spline or where your geometry bends and everything like that so right now it's just kind of arbitrary uh, and if I go to my rotation you can see that you know it's just kind of rotating how it wants to along that spline you can play around with um, the up vector and stuff and if I put a 1 in the Y up vector you can see that that kind of straightens out the front but then the back it's still kind of curved so that's not working for us so I'm going to go ahead and zero all that out so what I'm going to do with this rail is use this ribbon spline instance and I'm going to go ahead and you can see it's all janky right now but if I move this up move our spline instance up in Y you can see that flattens everything out and that's because we're using the exact same spline as our spline instance the exact same spline basically only moved upwards to be our rail so everything's going to be nice and flush and our edges are going to be nice and flat in the Y so if I render this see this looks really nice we have this really nice 2d flat edges effect to our ribbons and you might not you might like that you might not but that's how you get the nice flat edges over here so that rail helps flatten everything out and lets you lets the ribbon flow more predictable along your original spline here so cool all right so next what we're gonna do is add little um, little ribbon tips here on the edges here <clears throat> so the most important thing is to make sure we have split uh, fit spline and then extend so what I'm gonna do is we need to actually change this geometry to make our little ribbon points here and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go and first group our objects here and I'm gonna name this null uh, ribbon and I'm going to pull out the spline wrap and just bring it in the same level of the hierarchy because I'm gonna apply a different deformer to my plane and I'm going to go ahead and apply a correction deformer and if you've never used a correction deformer I'm gonna turn off my spline wrap here if I go to point mode you can see that by placing a correction deformer on our plane we now have access to all these points and all these edges and all these polygons but we don't have our plane object made editable so this correction deformer allows you to access and deform all of those points and everything without making that editable which is awesome so this is very helpful in certain situations so for right now we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna select the two end uh, two corner points here and you remember why I created um, two height segments here if I just had one you can see there's no middle section there so this wouldn't work uh, so let me go back and bring up our height segments again so select the two corners on each side so we got all four corner points selected and then we're just going to scale along the X here ever so slightly and you can see that that's making our points here our little uh, ribbon tip so if I turn the spline wrap back on you can see that's it's it's pretty janky right now so I'm gonna bring this in and I'm also gonna go to uh, my rotation from rail and I'm gonna turn that off you can see that's gonna straighten that out so that's a very huge uh, option there to just make sure you uncheck so this just kinda of continues on as if it's following uh, this last points direction or angle of its uh, Bezier path to kinda of infinity right cool so we have our spline tips with our correction deformer uh, and the nice thing about that is you can kind of change this to your heart's content because it's always there we didn't make anything editable or anything like that so the next thing we can do is go ahead and we can add some text and I'm gonna add text using uh, a spline uh, spline shader also got a tutorial on that as well and we're gonna learn some Latin I'm gonna render this out and on this 
little shield element with my iDesign logo. It's Oculus Propositum. I took Latin in high school. Yes, I'm a dork, but this means basically I design in Latin. There you go. There's your Latin learning fulfillment of the day. Uh, cool. So we got that. Let's add a seam to uh, this ribbon as well. Uh, so let's create a new material and I'm going to turn off color. I'm going to turn on luminance and I'm just going to make, I'm going to go ahead and grab this darker orange color here maybe make it just a tad bit darker and that's going to be our seams color now to I'm going to turn off our specular to get our seams our little seam lines that will kind of go along the top and the bottom here I'm going to go into our alpha channel and I'm going to create a gradient and I'm going to change this gradient from 2DU to uh, 2DV so we're up and down and I'm going to change our interpolation to none. So I want just flat, uh, no gradated, um, like smoothing between colors. Uh, and I'm just going to create um, some chiclets here to make a little seam there. And a little seam here in black and white. So we're using this black and white uh, seam stuff as a mat. And we're going to kind of look at our position and see that these are kind of in the same place uh, so this is around 90 and let's see that this is if that's 90 this should be like 10 uh, or so and then let's see what is our white chiclet so that's 88 so this will be 12 so now we have even uh, positions on this gradient and you can see that this is forming a little seam and if I go to my uh, picture viewer here, we see we have this darker seam using our, our color here. So I'm going to rename this seam, and I'm just going to apply this to our plane. So let's render that. And now you can see we have this nice seam here. And if that's too dark, we just go lighten that up a little bit and if we want to change the thickness of that or even the position we can move the seam points a little chiclet on the gradients uh, a little more wide and I can render that again and there you go we have this nice seam element here right cool so now So now we're basically done, but we can go ahead and animate this. We can animate the ribbon. So we're going to go ahead and go into our spline wrap, and we are going to have this as our endpoint. And we're just going to keyframe our to and from. And we're going to make this start from the middle here. So our to is going to, our from is going to start at 50%, as well as our to. And you can see that that now makes our ribbon disappear right so if I go ahead in my timeline you can see that we now have our ribbon unfurling as our from and to keyframes go from their respective 50 percent to zero and a hundred and we can go and go to our timeline and adjust the curve so they're a little bit a uh, little bit faster from the get-go and let's do a preview here let's just do the 45 all right let's check this out so there we have our our ribbon forming and for just some added one thing I like to do uh, especially with ribbons is slightly keyframe the strength here so if I go to frame 45 hit a keyframe on strength and go to zero and I'm gonna bring the strength down to say 80 
and we have to adjust our from and to here. And we'll probably have to uh, add a display tag and keyframe that visibility. We'll turn that down to zero. All right, so now with that strength, we have our stuff on a ribbon on furling, and we also have our strength animating as well. So you can see that the strength animating kind of give this nice organic look, and you can really see it if I bring down the strength a whole lot more so you can even keyframe it from this point to say like you know 40% and we also need to go ahead and adjust these guys here so maybe you can only get away with getting the Getting this so, getting the strength so low before you have to kind of really mess around uh, with all this stuff and maybe even play with the size. But uh, you get the point that um, adding that strength uh, element kind of gives you a nice organic effect here. So that's my little workflow on how to create a 2D style ribbon in Cinema 4D and animating it with a spline wrap and getting your correction deformer to create the little ribbon tips at the end, uh, creating a seam and using a uh, an instance of a spline to add to your rail to make your ribbon edges nice and flat. So that is it for today, and again, if you want to check out how to create this cell shader type look, uh, or this nice illustrative type look, check out my cell shader tutorials, and also check out the uh, spline shader tutorial on how to get that nice oculus propositum uh, text as a material using the spline shader. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.